Hello everyone, it's me, Onion Creature, and I'm going to be doing a bit of a retrospective on the 30th anniversary of the beloved Kirby series in this video. The Kirby series has a pretty good history of celebrating the different milestones, specifically in the last 10 years. With the 20th anniversary, we had Kirby's Dream Collection, and on the 25th anniversary, we had the Kirby uh, Symphony. And for this 30th anniversary, there's even more things that HAL Laboratory and Nintendo did to commemorate the occasion. Looking at everything that has been done this past year, this is actually one of the best years in Kirby history, I would say, in terms of uh, the different celebrations and the different games that we got that were released. So we'll just go through and uh, look at what, what happened in this past year and do a bit of a recap on that. I think it'll be fun to look back at the different things that, that happened this year, because there was quite a lot. In terms of the time frame of this anniversary, it's a little weird, but uh, as far as I can tell, it basically started, you know, last year, 2022, as the official year. For some reason, it was decided that for this 30th anniversary, it would begin in January of 2022, but then end in uh, on March 31st of 2023. So it did bleed over into 2023 a bit. I think that has to do with fiscal years or something like that, but that's, that's how the decision was made. There you go. So we'll be discussing the things that happened within that time frame. First of all, in terms of games, you know, Kirby is a video game series, first and foremost, and wow, you know, there was quite a lot. Uh, actually, within this time frame, it was pretty shocking to go through and just see the volume of video games that were released. Of course, we had Kirby and the Forgotten Land starting out the year in March. It could be my favorite Kirby game. It's really amazing. Uh, just a tremendous step into the third dimension for the series in a first proper game. Of course, we have had 3D games in the past in some form or another, but nothing on this scope or scale that's basically a translation of the 2D main series games into a 3D environment, which just worked phenomenally well, and it had so many new fun mechanics like the mouthful mode, upgrading the abilities, the new hub area, the sub-games, boss fights, I could go on and on, and I have actually because I have a very lengthy review about this game because there was much to say about it, so if you'd like to hear elaborated thoughts, uh, obviously check that out. I would say the next major thing that happened would be the Kirby 30th Anniversary Music Fest, which was announced pretty early on before it happened, which uh, gave us time to prepare. And what was really great about this was that it was live streamed uh, globally. The Kirby 25th Anniversary Symphony was not available unless you were in person at the event, and then they released recordings of it later on. But for this event, uh, everyone got to see it live, which was pretty amazing, and we got to hear some amazing new remixes, we got a few obscure choices, which was fantastic, and obviously we got the heavy hitters and the classics, the lyrical track from Kirby and the Forgotten Land, as well as Super Kirby Clash was included, which was a lot of fun to hear, and we got to see some major players in the Kirby series, like Shinya Kumazaki come up on stage, Kirby's voice actress, and uh, it was just a fun time a really great selection of music in a fun style, sort of big band slash orchestral. And also, that was not all, because there were actually some announcements at this event, which was pretty unexpected. I didn't see that coming, but uh, basically it was the announcement of Kirby's Dream Buffet, which was very shocking. That was very, very, very cool to see a full game announced at an event like that. And then also the release of the Kirby anime on Blu-ray, which is great. Uh, this has been released in Japan. Uh, you know, at one point I was maybe considering maybe I'll buy that, um, even if it's in Japanese. But then I looked at the pricing and it was like... It's a bit of money, so uh, not at the moment. I would like that to get released digitally at some point on a streaming service, or if there's ever a cheaper, more affordable option, I would definitely jump on that because it would be great to own a collection of the anime. But, yeah, in the form that it's been released, it's a bit pricey. So we'll see if we get any cheaper alternatives in the future. That would be nice. But, yeah, this is the first time they've been released in HD. Um, and, yeah, cool stuff. I think the, the box set comes with some bonuses, which is cool. So that's another way that they commemorated the 30th anniversary of the series. 
And yeah, so that whole Music Fest event was a great success. Um, there was some merchandise associated with it as well. Uh, goodies like that, they had like little electronic wands that changed color uh, during the performance based on what was being played. That was cool. And that leads us to, of course, the next Kirby game released being Kirby's Dream Buffet, a game which I wouldn't say I had low expectations for, but I didn't expect too much of, but it actually really surprised me with just how great it was. Uh, this was a $15 game, which is actually a really phenomenal price for it. It's basically a pseudo racing party where you roll around and collect strawberries and try and collect the most to become the fattest Kirby, which is fun. And uh, there's lots of unlockables, like different cookies with Kirby artwork on it that commemorate the different games. There's lots of great remixes of some of the spin-offs from Kirby's past, like Kirby's Pinball Land and Kirby Block Ball. So some really obscure music is included, which of course us Kirby fans love to hear. It really felt like a like a really great celebration of the different Kirby spin-offs that have been released in the past in terms of its music selection. And the gameplay is just really fun. It has a you know solid online mode that worked for me personally. I've heard for other people it didn't work as well, but for me it uh, worked fine. I will say that uh, it didn't take too long for online to completely die off, but that's pretty common for Switch games that aren't Mario Kart, Splatoon, or Smash Bros. Uh, online communities don't tend to last very long, which is sad, but it is what it is. But either way, that was a really great game uh, that was very surprising and uh, definitely check that out, obviously. I have a review of that as well, of course I do. In terms of some other minor things that were done in celebration of the anniversary, there was on the YouTube channel of uh, Nintendo as well as the Japanese uh, Kirby YouTube channel, they released the video versions of some of the tracks from the 25th anniversary symphony, which I hadn't actually seen. Um, I'm not sure if these were ever released before. I've seen clips from the symphony before, but Either way, it was great to see uh, official uploads of those on the different channels. Of course, those music tracks are available on iTunes and music streaming services, but it was still cool to see a YouTube upload of them. Just a nice little commemorative thing to do. Um, what's weird about all these music tracks is that they're all being removed on March 31st, 2023, which of course has already happened, so I haven't checked actually, but I'm assuming they're all gone because that's what they said they were going to do. Don't love that, it's annoying, but obviously those are things that are pretty easy to make backups of, uh, and you can find archives of them if you look for it. In terms of other YouTube uploads, there were the Kirby Storybook videos that they did. So I think these are uh, actual books that were released in Japan, as far as I'm aware, with uh, really great storybook artwork, um, you know, simplistic little like children's stories and uh, they're narrated in different languages. So we have the English release on uh, the official Nintendo YouTube channel and of course on the Japanese Kirby YouTube channel, they have the Japanese version. But yeah, these are just nice, nice little things. Uh, they're very, they lean into the cute side of Kirby, of course, um, which is appropriate. I would say one like tiny critique I have of them is that it would have been nice if they had Kirby background music for these. Uh, they basically use, I don't know, it's some sort of possibly stock music or sort of just generic background music. Um, and I think it would have been a little nicer if you had some Kirby tunes that had been remixed for that, but that's just my, my little feedback for it. Other than that, you know, great stuff. There was also a variety of merchandise released to coincide with the 30th anniversary. Uh, most of which I didn't get because, you know, it's an investment to get into the, all that merch stuff and most of it is not sold outside of Japan and uh, places like that. But uh, I do have a little bit. I have uh, I haven't got this this Kirby, which was like from a uh, some sort of gotcha machine. I think uh, my friend f picked that up for me. Appreciate that. It's uh, Kirby from Kirby sixty four, of course, because he's got he has the crystal shard. That's a fun thing. Uh, and then the other thing that I have uh, is this uh, this Kirby Nano Block, which I'm not going to pick up because it's probably a little delicate, and I don't want to break it and have to rebuild that, but it has the uh, Kirby 30th Anniversary sticker on the back. Uh, I talked about that in my review video of the Nano Block. Yeah, I liked the aesthetic that they chose for this 30th anniversary of the different Kirbys from the different eras. It's a, it's a fun look. I like that. In terms of other more minor game related things, we had the Nintendo Switch Online additions to the uh, legacy consoles like the Super Nintendo and the Game Boy. Uh, specifically, 
We had uh, Kirby no Kira Kira Kizu, the Super Famicom version of Kirby Star Stacker, which released on the Japanese NSO service, but can be played in any territory if you make a Japanese Nintendo account. Amazing, I really love that game, and being able to play it on Switch is a treat. And Kirby's Avalanche was also released, the Kirby version of Poyo Poyo. It's just a fun thing to see. It's a weird little game with, it's basically just Poyo Poyo with a Kirby skin, but who doesn't like that? Yeah, and then we had some Game Boy games. You know, recently in the Nintendo Direct, they announced that Game Boy games and GBA games were coming to Switch. And as part of that, we got the Kirby's Dreamland video game, of course. And also the announcement of some upcoming games like Kirby and the Amazing Mirror you know, a game which had multiplayer on the GBA, but now, as a part of Switch Online, will have online multiplayer, which is a pretty big deal. That's that's a great thing. And also, uh, more excitingly, you know, I think this is a great thing, is Kirby Tilt and Tumble is getting released as part of the Game Boy app. And that's pretty amazing. I'm assuming they're going to incorporate the Switch's built-in gyro uh, so, that, so that you can play it like that. Um, and I think that'll be really fun to see. Uh, I played the original Kirby Tilt and Tumble last year, and it's fun, certainly, but it's pretty dated in terms of having to use the old uh, unlit Game Boy screen. It actually makes it kind of difficult to play because you have to tilt it, and tilting the Game Boy screen, since it doesn't have a backlight, can be pretty tricky. So having it on a modern system is a really great thing, and this is the first time it's been re-released. So that's amazing, and I'm really looking forward to that when that comes out. And then most recently we saw the release of Kirby's Dream Land 2 on the Game Boy Switch app. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's just Dream Land 2. And they also released the uh, Symphony music track on that same day, which was pretty fun. So you have that Symphony music track with the original game being released on Switch. That's really cool. But those were some of the more major Kirby NSO games. Uh, I might have been forgetting one or two of them, but you know... They're all just legacy titles. I think Kirby 64 might have come out within the last year, so we can also count that in in this umbrella of 30th anniversary happenings. And then our last major video game was, of course, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, a surprise announcement at the September Nintendo Direct of the last year. And it came out in February of this year. I did a big review of it because it's great. Of course, it's Kirby's Return to Dreamland. What's not to love? It has some great enhancements, and uh, you know, I think this game really does celebrate the 2D games uh, that have released in the past 30 years. We have sub-games from across the series being included and updated with modern visuals, and then we have these different unlockable masks which span the whole series. There are lots of really fun inclusions there and some unexpected ones, so uh, it really feels like for that game they were celebrating the 2D entries in the series as they transition into this new 3D era of Kirby, which is very exciting. But we're also, you know, keeping in mind those past games and celebrating them as well as they should be, because they're amazing, of course. And then one of the last things which uh, I didn't even realize was happening until it had happened was uh, the Kirby developers had a talk at the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco, which is pretty major. I think that's a big deal. And uh, there were some slides released where, you know, some of them, some goofy ones where it's like Kirby is a superhero. So yeah, that was pretty great that they uh, were at, you know, that major industry event uh, talking about the design philosophy of the Kirby games. Other minor things, Kirby did win some awards. We, of course, had the uh, nomination and win for uh, Family Game of the Year at the Game Awards with uh, Geoff Keighley, Doug Bowser accepted. Uh, the award there, and I was I was glad to see that it won. Um, you know, it would have been nice to get one or two more nominations, but Family Game, you know, that's a start. Uh, that's Kirby's first game award, so uh, it's a step. It's a big step, for sure. So it's great to see, you know, industry recognition of the Kirby series. It's really long overdue, and I'm glad that Forgotten Land sort of was like a Breath of the Wild moment for the series, where it really propelled it in terms of reviews and sales. Forgotten Land is, of course, now the best-selling Kirby game of all time, which is fantastic. I love that. And, uh, yeah, as a Kirby fan, I really couldn't be happier with the, you know, the direction of the series, how well it was celebrated for the 30th anniversary. We got lots of legacy titles re-released, 
lots of new titles and uh, you know the more minor things of course just the little bonuses that are fun so yeah great anniversary I'm assuming the next one will be the 35th uh, they did a 35th one for Mario so of course I'm assuming they'll do one for Kirby all right uh, I have other Kirby videos planned of course uh, specifically I want to go over where I think the future of Kirby is headed uh, I think that'll be an interesting topic, so look for that one in the future, I suppose. And uh, other videos, of course, will be will be happening on the channel. They will uh, appear. Great. That's so fun. Happy 30th anniversary, Kirby. You know, this final time. We're in April now. It's uh, officially, I guess, going to be the 31st anniversary as of the 27th of this month. So that's fun. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll catch you all later, my friends. Farewell to ye.